Mercury retrogrades always make things interesting, but this particular Mercury retrograde carries an extra faded importance due to its repeated activation of the eclipse energies. In Aries, we'll be forced to make and remake some very quick decisions, causing us to take immediate action on old ideas that have come back around to be revisited. The decisions we make might feel a little bit impulsive and somewhat outside of our control, and that's because they probably are outside of our control because the North Node is involved. And with the North Node in the mix, forward progress isn't just possible, it's necessary. That being said, in order to move forward into a future that's more aligned with our destiny, which is what the North Node and the Eclipses require of us, we must first reevaluate and reintegrate plans and ideas from our past. Part of this energy also involves the ongoing conjunction between Chiron and the North Node, which is also being activated by this Mercury retrograde. Chiron in Aries represents a theme around the wounded will or the wounded identity. This brings up old wounds, traumas, insecurities, vulnerabilities, or just straight up awkwardness around doing what we know is best for ourselves. If at any point in the past we felt rejected for who we are and what we've chosen to take action on, and I mean, let's be honest, who has hasn't felt that way at one point or another, those experiences might be weighing on our minds throughout the entire month of April. We'll get into much greater detail about what this might look like for you more personally, including a forecast for all 12 signs later in this video. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an important astrology update. I post a new video every single Saturday, and I'm gonna be doing a lot of forecasts right now to cover all of the crazy energies going on in the month of March and April, so you don't wanna miss that. And if you're not already doing so, you should also follow me on Instagram, at Astrology with Heather. I'll be sharing a lot of insight on the current and future astrology in smaller bite-sized chunks along the way over there. Now let's get into the overview of what this eclipse means for us more collectively, which is super important to listen to, so don't skip this because it's gonna provide an important context for the more focused, individualized forecast that we're gonna be doing for all 12 signs. And so let's start with the first thing first, Mercury retrograde. For those who are not as familiar, maybe you're newer to astrology or you just need a refresher, Mercury retrogrades occur roughly three times a year for three weeks at a time. When Mercury's in retrograde, it's not actually moving backward in the solar system, of course, but from our perspective, from our vantage point here on Earth, it looks as though it's moving backward in the sky. This represents a few different things. First and foremost, Mercury is going to be much stronger and more potent in its influence. This is because when Mercury stations and goes retrograde and stations to go direct, it's much closer to the Earth and it's just not moving very quickly. It's like a focused energy that provides a catalyst for something that we need to pay attention to more consciously, more intellectually, because Mercury is the planet that represents our intelligence, our rational, logical thinking, our communication skills skills, our ability to take our ideas and turn them into solid concrete plans and to communicate them with the world at large. Mercury is putting an amplification on all of these topics and themes and causing us to have to slow down just like Mercury's doing and take a closer look to think things through much more clearly, much more slowly. So that way we can make sure that our plans, our ideas, the things that we're going to communicate moving forward are fully refined. Mind. Because of this, you might have some hiccups. Mercury is a fast moving planet normally, and because it's requiring us to slow down in areas where we're normally speedy and moving full steam ahead, we might not actually be doing that or paying attention. And so Mercury causes us or forces us to pay attention by throwing hiccups, throwing wrenches in our plans, throwing miscommunications in our way that causes delays, that causes us to have to redo something, revisit something, reevaluate something. And at first it can feel like a little bit of a headache, but upon closer inspection, usually it's a good thing that you had to take a step back and redo the thing or you know, completely scrap it and start from fresh sometimes. Sometimes it's a good thing that that miscommunication happened because you realize if you would have moved forward with the current agreement, with the current state of things, it wouldn't have been correct or it wouldn't have been right or something would have been missed or glossed over. And so Mercury brings all of these themes and topics to the forefront of our attention. 
When Mercury moves retrograde, it's also considered to be a more rebellious energy, especially when it comes to our thoughts, our ideas, and the way we communicate those thoughts and ideas out in the world. People might be saying things that they wouldn't normally say. They might be thinking about things in ways that are very different from their normal thought processes, and that can actually be a really great thing. It causes us to do things in a way that is just different from the norm, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's taking Taking our old ideas, the things that we started to move forward with, and forcing us to slow down, reevaluate, but also to think about it from a fresh perspective, or to maybe speak our minds and say something that we held back on, that maybe we censored ourselves with, because it was a little different, a little rebellious, a little outside of the box. Or maybe we never had that idea, but now that Mercury's retrograde, we're thinking about things in this unusual sort of way. And so all of these things can be very beneficial with that Mercury retrograde energy. And because I know you guys are going to ask this in the comments, you're still going to ask it even though I'm saying it in the video because you're probably not listening or skipping past it, some of you, <laughs> which is okay. I get it. Um, everybody, you know, has their own time constraints. But um, when it comes to people who are born with Mercury retrograde in the birth chart, yes, Mercury retrograde does function differently for you when it's happening in transit. And so with uh, people who have this in their birth chart, the things that we normally say that you shouldn't move forward with, like starting new plans, signing new contracts, uh, having really important communications go through for the very first time. Those are all things that, you know, the average person who's not born under a Mercury retrograde might have problems with when Mercury goes direct, things might get unraveled. They might have to redo things. You, on the other hand, it's different. <laughs> and so if you're born with a Mercury retrograde, this is a time where um, normally when communication is a little bit more difficult for you because Mercury retrograde natives tend to have um, a difficult time conveying what they're actually thinking or they feel misunderstood for one reason or another and it comes up time and time again. When it comes to the actual Mercury retrograde transit, that changes things for you. So you're much more easily able to think about something, plan it out, and then convey that information in a way that other people are easily able to accept and understand. This is also an okay time for you to sign contracts, to move forward with plans, to travel, to do all the things that other people might have difficulty with during the Mercury retrograde. And so now you know, I mean, there's a lot of people who have Mercury and retrograde in their birth chart because it does happen three times a year. It's the most common retrograde planet to actually have in your birth chart. And so just know that especially if you're doing something solo style without a Mercury direct person in the mix, this can be a better time for all of those mercurial types of things. All right, so let's get into the main events for this particular Mercury retrograde and what the heck is going on here. So Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Aries, which makes our communication very direct, very passionate, very straightforward, and very self-centered and self-focused. This can be a good thing, but <laughs> It can also be a bad thing. It depends. It depends on the situation. It depends on your normal nature and your normal state. It depends on who you're communicating with and what you're communicating about. And so if you're somebody who normally beats around the bush or is a little too considerate of other people's thoughts and needs and ideas and frame of mind um, where you're neglecting what you think, what you need, what you want, your plans, your ideas in favor of somebody else's, this is going to be a time where you get to take a step back and say, no, this is actually what I want and how I want it. We need to change this. I don't actually agree with what you said. I know we started on this path. We started on this project. We, we planned it in this way, but now that I'm reflecting on this. I want it this way. I want it my way. <laughs> and if you're somebody who is already very prone to that, maybe you got a lot of fire in your chart. Maybe you got a lot of areas already. This can kind of backfire on you and you might be the source of conflict as a result, or you might be on the receiving end of conflict as a result, because we're going to have a lot of people thinking that their way is the best way and it might be the best way for them, but it's not the best way necessarily for everyone else. And so again, it depends on the context. We'll talk about it more, what that looks like in your chart, but this could be a very um, interesting energy because of that North node, which is this 
really obsessive energy with plowing forward with something very independently that's very our own thing and then that mercury is in the mix which is causing us to not really think about other people as much and to not really consider these things as much and to um, speak in a way that's very blunt very direct a little abrasive maybe and so it, it, it's going to be Oh, an interesting time. It's not the best time for interpersonal communication and interpersonal connection and relationship. It's more about this is what I know I need to do for my own benefit, for my own ambition, for my own progress, for my own forward momentum. This is what I need to do with Chiron in the mix for my own healing process. That's another thing we need to talk about here. Mercury will be going back and forth, back and forth over Chiron. It's not just activating these faded karmic eclipse energies. It's not just giving us ideas and insights and messages that are going to propel us into a new path. It's also looking at past trauma, past wounds, past vulnerabilities, past insecurities, and what we need to say, do, rectify, heal through in order to move forward, to make progress, and maybe to help other people in our lives to heal through our example, through our leadership through our direct action that we're taking on ourselves to better ourselves, right? And so I like that Chiron energy for that. However, this is kind of a, a touchy energy. It's kind of like an energy where Mercury is going to be poking at our wounds, poking at our insecurities, poking at our traumas, the things that we don't necessarily want to deal with or think about because they don't feel very good. Those things are going to be on our minds and it might not necessarily be because anything is happening in our lives. That's bad necessarily. It's because something comes up in a message, in a thought, in a situation that gets our brains uh, ruminating on the past, gets our brains ruminating on how things once were when they were not so good, when we had an, some sort of initial wounding around our ability to express ourselves, to do what we need to do out in the world. And so it's, it's an interesting mix. It's not going to feel light and fluffy. It's going to feel like we have a lot to do and we need to charge forward into it. And, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of momentum going, but it's also going to feel uncomfortable and awkward as we're plowing forward into whatever it is that we need to move into based on where this is showing up in our charts, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So before we get into the all signs forecast, I want to get into some dates because you guys are going to be asking about them in the comments, which is why I do the general forecast first. Um, so Mercury retrograde pre-shadow and the first activation of Mercury conjunct the North Node actually occurred um, on March 18th and March 19th. And so that would have been something that came into your brain, a message that came through, an idea that started to take form or take shape, that's going to have to be revisited throughout the Mercury retrograde, and it's going to not fully resolve or move forward until probably at least April 25th, because that's when Mercury does that last conjunction to the North Node. So this shadow period lasts from March 18th until April 1st, when Mercury stations to go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. And in between that point on March 21st, Mercury is actually going to conjunct the eclipse point of the April 8th total solar eclipse in Aries. This is another pivotal moment where something might come up into our brain or through a message that we need to pay attention to and that just feels very exciting and very important. When that happens, jot it down, write it down, take note, whatever you need to do to keep it in your brain because it's going to come back around on April 15th when Mercury conjuncts the eclipse point in retrograde and when Mercury conjuncts Chiron in retrograde. It's kind of like we have this idea and it involves either healing other people, healing ourselves, um, something that we need to kind of move forward with in that area. And then we have to kind of go back and redo something about it. It's like we went maybe too hard, too fast, which I think is going to be a lot of this um, with the Mercury retrograde because that Aries energy is just so momentum based. And that energy with the North Node is all about just forward progress, forward progress, forward progress without consideration for the repercussions. And so that Mercury retrograde forces us to reflect and to kind of slow it down and revisit something that we shouldn't have gone so fast with or glossed over maybe the first time around. 
and especially that period around April 15th, that could be a really pivotal moment. Um, Mercury will also go Kazemi just before that on April 11th. And so that's a time where we're gonna get some really powerful downloads and insight about the future reality that we need to create for ourselves. And so that's gonna be kind of something to just make note of, pay attention to. Usually these insights come internally when Mercury's in retrograde and going Kazemi. And so it's an important time for quiet reflection not being so busy that you miss the message that comes through. And then finally, on April 18th, before Mercury goes direct, Mercury will conjunct Venus. This is not the best Venus energy because Venus is at its detriment in the sign of Aries. It's not supported there, but it will help create a little bit of equilibrium and balance. It'll at least make it so we can get our point across in a way that's more easily well-received by others. And so we can take better consideration of other other people's needs and ideas kind of in a more reciprocal way. On April 25th, Mercury is going to station direct on um, a, an exact conjunction with the North Node, you guys. This is a huge eclipse activation. This is a huge faded pivotal moment that starts around the 18th, 19th of March, where things finally start to take hold in a more powerful way when it comes to our ideas, our plans, our communications in the area of life being impacted by this Mercury retrograde. From the 25th through the 13th of May, we have the post shadow of Mercury retrograde. This is where Mercury is going to be moving forward over the same degrees where it just went retrograde. And this is where things start to move forward and get resolved that maybe um, went a little awry during that Mercury retrograde period. And so things fully get resolved around May 13th, which is that post shadow ending. And in between those two periods, we have one more conjunction of Mercury on the eclipse point of the April eighth eclipse and that occurs on May 4th. So all of those dates are going to have some sort of faded importance, but it's a smaller activation and it's more mental and communicative than anything else. And so in order for you to make the most out of our forecast here for all 12 signs, I just want to remind you guys to listen for your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign so you can get a more holistic overview of the energy for this entire three week period and beyond of the Mercury retrograde and all of these eclipse activations. Your rising sign will be the most predominant energy. Your sun sign will be secondary. And your moon sign is important to listen to as well, although this energy will be more internalized and subjective. And even if you're somebody who jumps right to your zodiac signs, all three hopefully, <laughs> Make sure you also watch the end of this video because we're going to be doing a five minute to seven minute preview of the energy that we're going to be discussing in the next week's forecast, which is going to be for that big total solar eclipse on April 8th, which is so life changing. You guys, you don't want to miss the end of this video. For Aries and for Aries rising, this energy is happening in your first house, which means that this Mercury retrograde is all about you. <laughs> And so for this Mercury retrograde, you might be having a lot more miscommunications, a lot more technological mishaps, a lot of issues with scheduling and late appointments and all of those little annoying Mercury retrograde things because this is impacting you more personally. However, when it happens in your first house, so especially if you're an Aries rising person, typically you are the cause of your own problems. You just might not actually realize it in the moment. <laughs> and so it, it could be that you told the person the wrong time. It could be that you put it down wrong in your schedule. It could be that you misspoke. It could be that you glossed over something because you were so excited to move forward and you know the communication wasn't exactly what it should have been. And so make sure that you are taking your time. Aries in particular is already prone to rushing through things, to jumping forward when you feel passionate, when you feel ambitious, when you feel excited about whatever it is that you're doing. And right now that can cause you to make a lot of little mistakes. And those little mistakes are going to add up to a lot of little headaches, <laughs> which could maybe turn into a bigger headache. So you want to make sure that you are just being mindful of every move that you make, especially during this Mercury retrograde and especially not just of every move you make, but of everything you say to people, um, all of the things that you sign off on, all of the things that you schedule, all of the things that you personally are responsible for planning and carrying out. Those are the things you need to take extra time with for Aries and for Aries rising. 
This is also a time where you're going to be very focused on moving forward with something that you feel very ambitious about, very called to do. It's going to feel like you are making a decision to kind of do something and change really your entire life during this eclipse energy, especially, which we'll talk about a lot more in next week's video. So make sure you're subscribed, but um, it's going to feel like, yes, you're making some sort of decision and this is having reverberations across your entire life life. However, it also feels like you don't really have a choice. It's kind of like the decision is made for you. You feel so intensely passionate about it, driven toward it. You feel like you're being guided by something bigger and you just have to do it. Um, just know that there's going to be some stuff that you're moving forward with. You have to do it. Like there's no choice but to just jump and plunge right in. But there are going to be things that you're going to have to redo, revise, revisit, um, renegotiate as a result of going so quickly into this new direction. This is also an energy where um, your health might be on your mind because of that Chiron energy that's being activated, but also there could be some sort of shame or guilt or vulnerability around either your physical appearance or physical body or around you just doing what you want to do the way that you want to do it. Something is triggering on a mental level a past wound, a past trauma, a past situation where you were maybe prevented from doing uh, whatever you wanted to do. You were prevented from acting on your will. It could also be that you plunged forward with something in the past and you know the results were not so good. Maybe you hurt other people. Maybe you kind of disrupted your life in a way that wasn't super pleasant. And so this is going to be reminding you of those things. It's going to be showing you how you can do it different. Um, and it's going to be helping you to heal through anything that is preventing you from actually taking action on what you need to move into because your whole life is about to change, Aries. For Taurus and for Taurus rising, this is not the most externally activated eclipse energy for you. Um, and so, no. For Taurus and for Taurus rising, this Mercury retrograde and really the entire eclipse season is more about a turning inward for you. Even though it's in the very driven, very physically uh, oriented, very ambitious sign of Aries, it's happening in your 12th house, which is the house of solitude, seclusion, and self-reflection. It's also the house of self-undoing. <laughs> and so there could be something that's going on behind the scenes that causes you to uh, maybe do something that's very karmic, very faded. It needs to be a part of your path, but the end results might not be exactly what you had hoped they would be. Um, this is a better time instead of like just going forward with something to sit back, relax, reflect, and to just watch things unfold in your life. This is a time where internal healing, your spiritual development, your spiritual healing, that's going to be first and foremost, the most important thing to pay attention to. Instead of just getting caught up in the busyness of day-to-day -day life, get caught up in the busyness of your consciousness and your subconscious realms and your unconscious experiences. This is a time also where dreams are going to be so, so potent and you're going to be getting really important messages that are going to be carried out throughout your entire rest of your life um, in some way, shape, or form throughout this eclipse season. And so you want to pay very close attention to what's coming up, messages in dreams, ideas that just kind of come in a daydream or in some sort of impression or through maybe an external source that sparks something within you. All of those things are going to be extra important. And this is where you're going to be doing some really deep like healing work that's going to potentially be tied not just to your past life experiences because that's that 12th house energy too. Um, if you don't believe in past lives, that's fine. It could be something you did in your past or you experienced in your past in this lifetime. And, um, you know, that could be coming up for you to kind of heal and work through, but you're just not fully conscious of it because it's been buried. That could be part of it too. Um, but there's something going on here where you're healing through like multiple lifetimes and multiple lifespans through the action you're taking on that internal level, on that self-healing level, um, in the present moment with this Mercury retrograde. So this is a very reflective time. This is a good time for journaling, for meditation, for paying attention to your inner world as opposed to your outer world. That's where you're going to get the right guidance that you need in order to move forward on this new path that you're going to be kind of embracing over these next few weeks. For Gemini and Gemini rising, 
For Geminis, this is happening in your 11th house, which is the house of friends, social networks, groups of people that you surround yourself with by choice. And so there could be some faded new connections coming in, but there could also be some reconnections coming back around in a way that's going to propel you forward into the right relationships, the right friendships, the right social circles, the right tribe. And so in order to kind of embrace this new beginning when it comes to your social life, when it comes to these really important connections, you have to go back and revisit some old wounds, vulnerabilities, insecurities, traumas, or awkwardness around being a part of the group or maybe not feeling a part of the group in your past. And so that's going to be something that's going to be on your mind that you're going to need to be working through, uh, you know, very consciously throughout this entire Mercury retrograde. So you can embrace this new beginning, this new friendship, this new connection, this new social life that you really need to be moving into because it's a part of your destiny. It's a part of your fate. Um, it could even be that you're taking some sort of leadership role within some sort of group or network. If that's the case, there's something that is preventing you like um, emotionally, psychologically, uh, emotionally, psychologically, from actually embracing what it is that you need to move into here in this leadership role. For Cancer and for Cancer Rising, this energy of the Mercury retrograde is having you rethink a lot when it comes to your career and your public reputation. The stuff that you put out into the world for public consumption, and especially the ideas you put out into the world for public consumption, are going to be under your own scrutiny, but maybe also scrutiny from other people. You might have said something that you have to take back. You might have signed on the dotted line and you need to renegotiate. You might have said something to your boss or your superior and you're putting your foot in your mouth. <laughs> That's what this Mercury retrograde is going to be all about. So if you're going to make a public statement, if you're going to make a decision related to a career path or to your work, make sure you've thought it all the way through because this Mercury retrograde is going to be all about you lunging forward into something and then having to say, oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do it that way. Or oops, I need to revise this in one way or another. It might not be the worst thing in the entire world, but it's going to have you feeling a a little uncomfortable, a little ashamed, a little awkward, and it's going to bring up, you know, potentially some issues from the past of feeling publicly shamed, publicly vulnerable, publicly exposed. And so you're going to want to make sure that you're using this as more of a lesson. So it's kind of like, oops, I did that. And you know what? This is a repeating pattern. It's triggering something for me where I feel, you know, uncomfortable just like I did when I was 10 years old and I was put on the spot for my teacher or whatever it was. And, you know, now's the time for me to move past this and to just like not care maybe what other people think so much or, you know, not worry about this or to go through some sort of process of healing. This could also be a process of healing that you're revisiting involving people in positions of power and authority. So if you have some sort of trauma around authority figures, now's the time where the North Node is going to force you to actually have to confront that and Mercury retrograde is going to have it really, really weighing on your mind. So you're going to be able to mentally and consciously process through this, talk through this, move forward with this, or maybe lead other people to heal in a, in a similar way or from similar types of wounds, wounds or trauma. This is also a time where if you are somebody who is a healer or in the healing arts in one way or another, you could be stepping into a new role or a new path with your career. And you're going to have to revisit something from your past in order to make that a possibility. For Leo and for Leo rising, this energy is happening in your ninth house, which is the house of your beliefs about God, the universe, the world around you. This is your philosophical ideologies. This is your religious belief systems. This is what frames your reality through your perception on life. And Mercury is going to have you rethinking some things. <laughs> there could be an old wound, vulnerability, insecurity, or trauma in your past that's been shaping your reality, that's been shaping your framework, your philosophies, your ethical and moral value systems that you're realizing is coming from a place of trauma. It's coming from a place of being wounded. And it's not necessarily productive or relevant in the present. It doesn't apply to all things in all situations. And so Mercury is going to cause you to have to think about that and revisit it. There's 
There's also the potential here for really important faded travel plans, which we'll talk about a lot more in the next video, or a faded connection to a foreign country or people in a foreign country that you might have some little mishaps with. It's not that you shouldn't do it, you have to do it. Um, but Mercury is going to potentially put a little damper on your travel plans by causing you to have to reschedule things, um, you know, delays, missing flights, like all that stuff's gonna be way more prevalent for Leo than for a lot of the other signs. And it's gonna be more likely that you're traveling than some of the other signs as well. This is also a really great time to reconnect with a teacher from your past in order to embrace something new together or a new educational program. So it's kind of like you already learned with this person, you wanna reconnect with them, and then they have this new thing for you and you feel super excited to learn about it, to embrace it, to take it forward with you. Um, and this could also be you kind of reteaching something that you've taught in the past. So this could be you as a teacher having to go back and revise your curriculum and put it out in a new way. For Virgo and for Virgo rising, Mercury is going to be retrograde in your eighth house, which is the house of trauma. It's the house of anxiety, fear, uh, death and rebirth and transformation. And so we'll start there because Chiron's involved and Chiron also has to do with our wounds, our trauma, insecurity, vulnerability. And so there's something going on here where a past experience of wounding, where you felt very vulnerable, where you felt very insecure, awkward, or ashamed about what went on in your life. This is being brought up not necessarily through a reactivation of that same type, type of situation happening, but mentally it's being brought up. Like you are consciously aware all of a sudden that you have had this experience in your past that's holding power over you in the present moment because you haven't worked through it, you haven't healed through it, you haven't let it go. If you're somebody who has in the past undergone some sort of talk therapy or psychotherapy, now's the time to reconnect with your counselor, your therapist, whoever, and kind of work through these things once and for all. This could also be that you need to kind of go back and discuss a past wound, a past trauma with somebody important in your life and talk it out, work through it, get over it. Um, this is also just one of the most powerful times for you, Virgo, for a psychological transformation that reverberates into the physical and creates physiological healing as a result. This could also be an energy of having to revisit and redo things involving your finances, especially joint finances. So your finances in partnership with somebody else, your finances in terms of, you know, um, investments or debt or inheritance. Like maybe there's something where you need to go back and revise your will. Um, there's something that you need to go back and revise with your insurance policy or your life insurance. If that's the case, now's the time to do it. It's very important for your future. Even if you don't really understand exactly why or how it's so important for you to be doing that right now. This could also be where you need to go back and just deal with old wounds around like financial insecurity and debt and maybe clean that up a little bit. This would be the time to do it. And this is almost what's being demanded of you if that's something that's applicable to you personally. For Libra and for Libra Rising. This is happening in your seventh house, which is the house of relationships. This Mercury retrograde could have old love affairs, old flings, old relationships coming back around, people texting you, calling you. It doesn't actually have to be romantic either. Close connections from your past might be trying to get back into contact with you. And that might be really important because there's some sort of wound or uh, difficulty from your past that needs to be healed and talked out and worked on and worked through in order for you to move forward with your relationships in the present, even if that means closing it out and completing that cycle. In your current relationships, there is something that you need to revisit, an old wound, an old difficulty um, that you need to heal through together. This is one of the best times to go to couples therapy if you're somebody whose relationship is struggling. This is the best time to get a mediator or a counselor involved if you are in negotiation with somebody and it's not working out the way that you need it to or that you want it to and you just can't come to an agreement. If your um, internal dialogue, if your trauma, if your psychological issues are getting in the way of coming to a a reciprocal kind of negotiation with your partner or with anybody in your life, this is the time to get a third party involved and go through a process of healing through that. 
This is also where new relationships can come in, but not until you've healed through your past relationships. And so if you're somebody who's looking for a new partner, that's absolutely a possibility. But if you're bringing all your baggage with you, it's not going to work so well. It's going to be more for a reason and for a season than it is going to be for like a lifelong commitment. So you want to make sure that you are doing the inner work, journaling, reflecting on your role also in, you know, potentially damaging your past relationships. That's going to be a big one because of that area Aries connection too. For Scorpio and for Scorpio rising. For Scorpios, this is happening in your sixth house, which is the house of health, work, and daily routines. This is a time where there could be something you have to revisit when it comes to your health. So if there is an old like health routine, health regimen, exercise program, uh, supplementation that you did in the past that um, maybe you just forgot about, maybe it was working, but it just kind of like fell off your radar, or maybe it didn't work the first time around, but you're realizing you didn't do it properly or you need to give it a second chance, now is the time to bring that in. There's something from the past that needs to be revisited and reintegrated in order for you to move forward with your healing and with, especially with your physical healing, if that's applicable to you in the present moment. If you want to perfect your body, you first have to go in and revisit those things that you have let fall by the wayside or that you've become too lackadaisical around when it comes to your health routines. And if you want to perfect your body, you also have to deal with any psychological wounds, any trauma, guilt, shame, vulnerability around your health from the past. This is going to be especially applicable to people who have had recurrent health issues or chronic health issues. You need to look at what this has done to you in terms of psychological damage, and you need to actually work very actively on healing that mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and then physically. This could also be bringing up wounds, shame, vulnerability, insecurities around your work and around your connection with your coworkers. And so if there's any bad blood in the workplace, now's the time where you need to get like counseling, you know, if that's available to you, or it's kind of some sort of self-care thing if your company has that, or you just need to talk it out with this person. And if you're somebody who has employees, same difference. You need to heal through the trauma and you need to move forward because there's some big project, some big ambitious undertaking that this is blocking you from. And so Mercury is going to be causing you to have to revisit the past in order to move forward with something new. It could also be that you have to revisit an old past project um, in order to bring it back and refresh it in some way. So redoing old stuff from your work and refreshing it. And that's going to help propel you forward into something new uh, when it comes to your work in the future. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, this Mercury retrograde is going to be treating you a little bit more nicely than some of the other signs, and so that's great news. <laughs> so Mercury is retrograding in your fifth house, which is the house of joy, hobbies, play, thing that, things that you love and things that you're passionate about just because you enjoy them and they're fun to do. This could be you revisiting an old hobby, an old pastime from your past that you have let fall by the wayside. You used to be so passionate about it and now you've given it up. Maybe you gave it up because there was some sort of trauma around it. There was some sort of shame or vulnerability. Maybe you felt guilty for just enjoying yourself. If that's the case, now's the time to get over it <laughs> because you need to do that thing again. <laughs> this could also be, um, you know, potentially some mishaps, some miscommunications, some rearranging going on involving your children or your children's schedules if you have children. So this is not going to be, of course, applicable to everyone. But for those who have children, this could be a time where um, that could feel like more chaos than normal because everything's going to be all over the place. There's going to be a lot of miscommunication. You're just going to be feeling very busy in that area of life where a lot is coming up very quickly. And so just make sure that you're taking the time to breathe and to also enjoy yourself because this is a time where your passions need to be front and center. So it's not just about your children's lives and your children's schedules. That can't dictate everything right now. You need to focus on you. You need to focus on what you love, what you want to do, your hobbies, your interests, the things that make you feel good about life, the things that make you feel um, creative, the things that bring you joy because this is really about revisiting joy and letting go of any guilt or shame or past trauma that is preventing you from accessing that joy. 
And also the fifth house is the house of romance, love affairs, flings, things like that. And so if you had like past romantic encounters, usually not long term, this could be like a one night stand. This could be like someone you dated for a couple weeks. They might be texting you, DMing you, something along those lines. If that is the case, and especially if there's healing to be done as a result of that situation, you should revisit it because now is a time with that Chiron energy where a lot of progress can be made that's maybe preventing you from enjoying yourself romantically in the present moment. And so that could be part of this for Sagittarius as well. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, this is all happening in your fourth house, which is the house of home, family, property, real estate, your roots, your parents, everything that goes beyond or all things that go on behind closed doors, behind the scenes, at your roots, right? At your home base. And so this is gonna be maybe a little bit of rearranging going on in your home. In fact, this is one of the best times whenever you have a Mercury retrograde in your fourth house to actually rearrange your home, redecorate, reorganize, change around the furniture, do some feng shui, <laughs> whatever it is you need to do to shake up the energy and kind of revise the energy in some way. This would be a really great time to clean out your closet it, you'll find a lot of really great treasures that you might have forgotten about and that could be really great as well. Speaking of cleaning out your closet, <laughs> if there are feelings, emotions, difficulties, issues that have made, been remained buried um, involving your past, your early childhood, your connection with your parents, now is a time where that might be weighing on your mind. You might need to have that difficult conversation with mom or dad. You might need to have that difficult conversation with your family about something that happened that you didn't really address previously. Now is the time to air it out, to clean it up, to heal through it because of that Chiron energy. That Chiron is going to be making you feel um, your wounds much more apparently, much more deeply, and much more consciously. It could be that you didn't even actually realize that this was an issue until just now, and now you have to bring it up, you have to talk about it, you have to redo it. If there is some sort of like past trauma, past wounding around your living situation specifically, and that could even be for certain specific people, something around like homelessness or not having a stable home environment. Now is a time where that's going to be brought back up, not necessarily like in an actual situation. It looks like there could be a move going on for you and there could be a lot of miscommunication and hectic energy around that for some, of, some people who have Capricorn rising. But it could be that if there was insecurity security in your home environment very literally in the past, it's coming up in a mental way. It's coming up in a like thought process way where it's in the forefront of your consciousness and you're thinking about it a lot more. Now is the time to talk it out, to work through it, to heal through it, to journal about it, to get that counseling that you need in order to move on so that way you can have and create the home life that you desire, that you deserve moving forward because there are big changes going on here and the changes might be positive, but it could still be triggering because it's creating a sense of instability when it comes to your living situation. And for some Capricorn and Capricorn rising people, you might very literally be having to just renegotiate the terms of your like lease agreement or something along those lines. And so that might be coming up for you as well. There could be some hurdles and hiccups there. But um, yeah, for the most part, this feels more like it's a healing process that you're going through because there's so much Chiron energy involved. For Aquarius and for Aquarius rising, this energy is happening in your third house, which is the house of extended family and siblings. So let's start there because that's the most likely culprit when it comes to the Chiron energy. So if you have any past wounds, vulnerabilities, insecurities, shame, guilt, um, trauma around your siblings or your extended family, cousins, aunts, uncles, things like that, it might be coming up right now and you might have to talk through it and work through it. This could also be a really healing time for communication. So healing through communication with other people on all levels. It doesn't just have to be extended family or siblings. This is also a time where if there's any sort of issues that have been long-standing involving your neighbors, so maybe you have bad blood between you and like the, the neighbor down the street or something like that, that could come up for you and you might have to talk through it, work through it, renegotiate in some way. Um, there could be issues that come up or miscommunications that come up involving your neighborhood, your community, your city, your town. Um, you could end up maybe something along the lines of like you had a ticket for something and you forgot about it and then it comes back around and you're like oh crap now i have an extra fine because it's late it could be something as simple as that there could also be um you know a lot of 
rearranging and miscommunication going on involving travel plans right now, especially travel by vehicle. So you wanna make sure that if your check engine light is on, you get that checked out. You wanna make sure that if something doesn't sound right or feel, like, feel right, you get that checked out too. Um, there could be, you know, some just issues with vehicles and that could stall you out. You could get a flat tire. I mean, just something as simple as that could really, um, become extra important around this time period because it could throw you off kilter and it could delay you with something that might have greater significance than just like going to and from work or something along those lines. So that could be important. Not the best time to purchase a new vehicle, although it looks like some of you might have to. So if you have to purchase a new vehicle because of the energies with the eclipses, it's something that is meant to happen, but you wanna make sure that there's wiggle room or that you have like some sort of warranty or the ability to take it back and get something fixed if something isn't quite right a few weeks in because that is likely to be the case as well. Not the best time to sign a contract for something like financing though. So if you have like the need for financing for a vehicle, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sign on the dotted line for that at least. <laughs> um, and for some of you, you might be traveling and that's okay, just know that there could be delays and uh, difficulties with that. It's almost like you have to do it if that is what's going on for you. You don't have an option. It's like what you're being propelled into and it's significant. But the little things might become a little bit of a headache for you. So just make sure that you're taking extra time, you're planning extra well, you're over communicating your intentions and your itinerary and everything should be okay. For Pisces and for Pisces rising. This Mercury retrograde is happening in your second house, which is the house that's most connected to material possessions, money, wealth, very literally. It's pretty straightforward in the second house <laughs> most of the time. And so, um, first and foremost, there's gonna be a lot of changes going on for you over the course of the next few weeks when it comes to your finances. They could be positive, it could be a lot of growth, it could be you know, moving in a new direction when it comes to the way that you earn your money or making an important purchase. But just know that there's something here that you have to revisit and redo and reorganize and reassess before you can really lunge forward into it. It could be that you you do move forward with something. So say you move forward with a really big, important purchase and there's something that doesn't go quite right and you have to kind of go back and change something about that or change the terms in some way or return it for a new one. <laughs> that could be part of this too. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's something that you have to make note of because it will throw a little bit of a wrench in your plans. This is also a really, really important time with the Mercury retrograde in particular to do some mental and psychological healing around any money issues that you have. Like, so if you have any past trauma, any past insecurity, any past difficulties that are weighing on your subconscious, that are now being brought to the forefront of your conscious awareness, involving money and resources, you need to get those blockages out of there. You need to work on it and work through it right now. This is a powerful time for healing through any past issues with financial insecurity especially and so doing that is going to help release a lot and allow you to move forward in a brand new direction when it comes to your money and the way that you deal with your finances so that's going to be so 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 important um so yeah, it's gonna be, and there could also be the need to kind of rebalance your budget, rebalance your books. Um, this is a really good time to take a look at like all of your uh, bank accounts and just make sure that you're kind of pouring over thing and everything and being a little bit more meticulous at this time during the Mercury retrograde because you're gonna find mistakes and like little things that are gonna add up and that you're gonna wanna pay closer attention to moving forward. So that's another really great way to use this energy more productively for Mercury retrograde in the second house. And so let's move on to the big total solar eclipse that's happening in Aries on April 8th, which we'll be releasing a full video, a full forecast on next weekend on March 30th. So this energy is a big, big Chiron activation. What we just talked about this week is kind of a baby version of the intensity of the woundedness, the healing, the awkwardness, the triggering that's going to be going on when it comes to that Chiron activation. This is an energy where the eclipse and the north node is an exact conjunction with Chiron. This is super, super, super close. And so this is going to be a powerful time of collective and individual healing and coming into our own as healers. There might be a lot going on in the forefront of our consciousness in our kind of global sphere around health and healing as well. That could be a big part of this energy. 
with the kind of repercussions of the fact that this is going to be in Aries and thinking back to what went on the last time we had these eclipses in Aries and in Libra, this could represent escalation of conflict um, on a global scale. So I just want to prepare you guys for the fact that that could be a potential or a possibility. And we'll discuss that in much greater detail next weekend. Um, and also because this is a total solar eclipse, it's going to crisscross the United States. So we had um, one eclipse last Last year that went in one direction we have another one going on on April 8th going in a second direction where it's impacting the US and things that the U the United States would be involved in much more predominantly than for other countries there could be bigger implications for people who live in the United States and so that's something to also just kind of think about and pay attention to it doesn't mean that something happens exactly on the eclipse usually it's you know a few months or even a few year years out when we have these eclipse activations you also have to look at the duration of the eclipse and the totality and so many other things which again, we're going to talk about so in detail next week. But in addition to this being a really powerful energy that really indicates massive change um, across the board on a global scale, but especially in the United States, there is also going to be a comet that's going to be visible at the time of the eclipse. And so it's the Pons Brooks co Comet. It's also been referred to as the Devil's Comet because it had horns in a, an image at one point. And comets are an omen of change as well. So we have this big omen of change going on with the total solar eclipse and we have this big omen of change going on with this comet that only comes around, I think it's once every 71 years and they're coinciding and you're going to be able to see them at the same time. This is very rare and this is very significant. This has historical implications. And so you're definitely not going to want to miss next week's video. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section how you're dealing with the energies right now and what's coming up for you. Share this with a friend if you feel like they can benefit from the information that I share with you today and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.